الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear respected brothers and sisters May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your fast accept your qiyam accept all your righteous deeds May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you from those that Allah frees from the hellfire in this blessed month and every night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of you from this pandemic. May Allah protect you, protect your family, protect your loved ones from all kinds of calamities and all kinds of diseases, whether they are apparent or they are hidden. The number, Barakallah Fikum, as a reminder again, in case you have a question, you can send your text. Please do not call, just send your text to this number 561 566 6380. 561 566-6380. Insha'Allah Ta'ala, we're going to continue benefiting from this beneficial book by Sheikh Al-Allama Muhammad Ibn Salih Ibn Atimin Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And the Sheikh, we stopped last night when the sheikh was talking about those who have difficulty fasting and some of them may even be harmed if they if they were to fast so the sheikh rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned some ayat from the quran where well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَ And do not throw yourselves into destructions by your own hands. Surah Al-Baqarah. And in a hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is to be no harming of others, nor harm to our to oneself. Reported by Ibn Majah, Al Hakim. And then Noah we said its paths of narration strengthen one another. So as you see, Walillahi Alhamd in this legislation. There is always ease and flexibility. So if you are old and you cannot fast, do not force yourself to fast. Because you will harm yourself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a way out for you. If you have a chronic sickness and you have to take the medication, then do not say, well, I'm going to fast anyway. This is not a wise decision because this could be very dangerous, very fatal to a person. And that's why the scholars, they mention, they said that in certain situation, that which is halal, permissible, becomes haram. I will give you an example. Consuming honey is good. It's good for your health. It has a lot of benefit in it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke highly about honey. But if someone was allergic to honey, and if he was to take it, he may even die from that then honey becomes haram for such a person. 
even though the origin, it is halal. But because it would lead to his destruction and perishment. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made things easier for us. As you see, this religion has guidelines. This religion has moderation. This religion has compassion in it, has mercy in it. Walillahi alhamd. The Shaykh, he said, one can find out if fasting will be harmful to a sick person by the first one, that a person feeling it to be harmful on himself. Okay, if the person himself who is sick is finding it, that it's very hard, he can't take it. Right? Number two, him being informed of it by a reliable doctor. If a reliable doctor informed him or her, and he said, you cannot fast, if you do, you're going to harm yourself. And your sickness will get worse and worse. So in that case, this person does not fast. طيب. The Sheikh he said, when a person who falls under this category of being sick breaks his fast, he must make it make up the number of days he missed when he recovers. So when the person recovers, then they are required to make up the days, to make up those days. But if he dies before he recovers, then making up the missed days is no longer binding upon him. Is no longer binding upon him because he is no longer living. He is deceased. Since he is only ob- obligated to fast, the number of days missed in other days which he was not able to reach. Okay, now... This person he was not able to reach means he, is, he was not able to fast because he died before that. So there is no sin upon him. Likewise, a woman who had the intention to perform hajj, but she couldn't find a mahram to travel with her. She could not find a mahram to travel with her. And she died before she could find a mahram to go with her to perform hajj. There is nothing upon her. There is nothing upon her. The sheikh, he said, a traveler. Now the sheikh, after he spoke about the sick person, now he's going to talk about the traveler. al musafir the traveler. The sheikh said, a traveler falls into two types. The traveler falls into two types. First, whoever intends by traveling to cheat his way out of fasting. There are some people they do that. They want to cheat their way out of fasting. It is not permissible for such a person to break his fast. Since cheating one's way out of Allah's obligations does not remove those obligations from him. So he's still required to fast. Plus his intention was not good because he intended only by traveling to cheat his way out. And that's why the scholars, he said, whoever travels to commit a sin, then he does not shorten the Salat and he does not combine the Salat. He does not shorten the Salat and he does not combine the Salat. Because that's not for him. For somebody who's traveling to do something halal. Second, whoever does, does not intend the above by traveling, this person may fall into one of the following three situations. The first... A fasting 
is extremely difficult upon him, upon the traveler. In this case, it is forbidden for him to fast. Since one time, the Prophet ﷺ was fasting while on the military expedition to conquer Mecca, when news reached him that the people found it difficult to fast and they were looking at him to see what he would do. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, called for a cup of water after Asr and drank from it while the people were looking at him. Later it was said to him, some people are still fasting. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, replied, those are the disobedient ones. Those are the disobedient ones reported by Muslim. This is the guidance of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a religion, alhamdulillah, of moderation. Number two, fasting is difficult upon him, but not so severe. In this situation, it is detested, makruh, for him to fast since he is refraining from one of Allah's concession. Because Allah gave him the concession, gave him the permission to break his fast. While putting a burden upon himself. Number three. Fasting is not difficult upon him. In this case, he may do whatever is easiest on him. Whether... It is fasting or choosing not to fast. This is based on Allah's statement. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ Allah wants ease for you. And He does not want to make things difficult for you. Surat Al-Baqarah. Ayah 185. So the word want here takes on the meaning of love. That Allah loves, is for you. If there is no difference between fasting or not fasting, then fasting is more preferable because this is what the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did as is reported in Sahih Muslim from Abu Darda radiallahu an who said we went out on a journey with the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during Ramadan under intense heat conditions to the point that each one of us would put his hand over his head to cover it due to the severe heat of the sun and no one would be fasting amongst us amongst us amongst the companions except the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Abdullah ibn Rawaha radiyallahu anhu Abdullah ibn Rawaha, he was one of the companions who was a scribe of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from those that documented the Quran for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abdullah ibn Rawaha radiallahu anhu. A traveler is considered to be traveling from the time he leaves his country. Not from the time when he is at home like some people do it. They start combining and shortening while, while they are in their home. This it doesn't work like that. So, when he leaves his country, when you don't see the buildings anymore, the Sheikh, he said, to the time he returns to it, to the time he returns to it, all that time is considered a traveler. And if he takes up residency in the land he travels to, for a period of time, 
he is considered to be traveling as long as he holds the intention that he will never reside there after the objective for which he traveled there for in the first place is fulfilled like for example li- like us we don't live in uh, our uh, you know home country we live here in the US right so when you go home for example you go home and you stay there for some time for one month two months so according to the sheikh rahimahullah sheikh murtimi rahimahullah that you you are considered a traveler you considered a traveler consider a traveler so you can actually combine and shorten and, and all that so he is entitled to all of the allowances a traveler has even if the length of his residency extend extend for a long time this is since the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not mention any time limit defining when a travel ends because reason the sheikh is mentioning this because there are some scholars that they say if you stay more than four, four days if you stay more than four days then you are no longer a traveler you're no longer a traveler but it seems like the opinion of sheikh bin atimin is stronger it seems that way because this person he doesn't have the intention to reside in that country he's just going to take care of his business and go back that's it so he's not a resident there so he's considered a traveler yes so the sheikh he said rahimahullah ta'ala the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not mention any time limit defining when a traveler travel ends and the foundation with regard to this issue is that one remains in a traveler state and under its rules until there comes a proof that the travel has ended and its rules fail to apply so the sheikh is saying he, there is no proof and evidence that defines the time because those scholars they say if it's four days and up you can you can shorten and combine for four days but after four days you can't right so the sheikh is like he's refuting that opinion it's like he's refuting that opinion he's saying that there is no proof and evidence from the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it seems that his opinion is stronger the sheikh he said there is no difference in breaking the fast while traveling between a time constraint travel such as hajj umrah because it's time constraint you have like a number of days that you are there are you very important when you read english and you don't have a background of arabic you get confused you get very confused like someone who doesn't have that Arabic background and read this he may not understand what the sheikh is talking about because English and Arabic they're two different languages طيب the sheikh he said visiting a relative business travel and so on and between a continuous travel such as journeys made by a car service drivers such as taxis or other larger form of transportation look at the sheikh rahimahullah is very extensive like the way he breaks it down he doesn't leave anything out he even talks about the the car the taxi drivers and those who drives trucks and all that because they're travelers they're always moving around you know uh, carrying people from this area to this area they're always moving around the sheikh he said rahimahullah ta'ala such as journeys made by car service drivers such as taxis or other larger forms of transportation i.e. buses when these drivers exit from their countries they all enter into the state of travelers <coughs> if he is inside the city 
He's not traveling. Like Uber, for example, Uber. Inside Palm Beach, he's not traveling. But he goes outside Palm Beach and he goes further, then he's a traveler. طيب. The Sheikh he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, they all enter into the state of travelers. And it is permissible for them to do whatever other travelers are permitted to do. Such as not fasting during Ramadan. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a, confi- a concession, which is permission. A concession to sh- shortening the four rak'at prayers into two rak'at. Meaning Dhuhr and Asr. Dhuhr and Asr. Maghrib stays the same. It doesn't get shortened. Isha gets shortened to two. Sheikh, he said, and combining the Duhar and Asr prayers and Maghrib and Isha prayers when there is a need for it, when there is a need for it. Abstaining from the fast is better for them than fasting. If that is easier for them, And they can make up the days missed during the winter. Because the winter is easier to make it up in the winter. Look, subhanallah, the sharia, this legislation, is so easy and flexible. So you can make it up. And it's also good for for the sisters. For the sisters, you can make up, you know, the days from Ramadan while you are on your menses. You can make it up in the winter. The sheikh, he said, Now, this is because, why? Because the winter, when, you, when the Sheikh said the winter, the Sheikh didn't mention it here, he mentioned it in other, you know, statement. Because the winter, the days are shorter. The days are shorter and cooler too. Cooler and shorter. This is because these car services drivers have their own country which they ascribe to. So when they are In their, when they are in their own country, now, so the Sheikh is talking about those uh, service drivers, service drivers, طيب. the Sheikh he said, which they ascribe to, send, so, when they are in their own country, Then they are considered residents. And whatever applies for or against all other residents also applies for and against them. And when they travel, they are considered travelers. And whatever applies in favor or against travelers also applies applies in favor or against them or against them so inshallah we're going to see if we have any questions from um, the brothers and sisters inshallah we will see if we have any if not we'll continue inshallah ta'ala. we're going to take like a little break to see if we have any questions from anyone okay. You have a question? Go ahead, inshallah. Okay, the first one will be, what's the difference between time-constrained travel and no time-constrained travel regarding fasting and prayer? Okay, the the time-constrained travel is a a travel that is known, like, for example, you know you're going to stay for five days, or you're going to stay for ten days. How that impact, like, fasting and prayer? So this one, the sheikh is saying, there is no difference. Like, you, you are a traveler. If you are, even if you're staying more than four days. Okay. You are a traveler, you can combine, you can, you can shorten. Um, so you have all the concession of a traveler. So the non-constraint travel, it meaning that, for example, you're going uh, to a place and it took you a long time to take care of your business. Mm-hmm. But you know in the back of your mind that the time your business finish, you're going to go back to your residence country. You still shorten and combine. You still shorten and combine. So this is what he meant by that. Ah, okay. 
So uh, right. Um, so what about no. the travel constraint? Is by county or by city for Muslims? Like, well, what would be the reference? Like, uh, when does it can? When, when will it be considered travel? Like, yeah, like what really is like? Because if you're outside the county or outside the city, like, if you are outside the county, but not city. Yeah, no, not the city, the county. What would be the reference for it? Like, how do we know that? Uh, because uh, the scholars there mention that um, a traveler will be considered a traveler when he doesn't see the buildings anymore, the structure of that place where he resides. Mm-hmm. So if he does not see that anymore, then he is a traveler. He's a traveler. Mm-hmm. Now, oh. if he does not see the, the buildings anymore and the buildings disappear, that's it. Like, for example... Like, like, like if you live in... Uh, when, you go, when you go on the ocean, right? When you go on the boat on the ocean yeah. and you go far, you don't see the, the buildings anymore. The building meaning like yes. your, your own residence building. Yeah, yes. So your own residence. You can't see your own residence. No, that's it. The, the whole, the, yeah, that, that place where you reside. So not necessarily county. Whenever it's no, it has to be. Like, because if you're inside the, uh, the area where you live, the, the city, that will not be considered travel. It has to be. But you can't see your apartment, though. No, they're talking about the building of the, of the whole place, not just the, your residence, the whole place. Wow. Outside, outside the, the county. Because inside is not considered travel. You're still, you're still uh, resident. But by whole place, meaning the whole city. The whole county, not whole city. County. No, no. The whole. That's why the scholars they say a woman can uh, can travel in the city because she's not considered a traveler without a mahram. Mm. You understand? She would like, for example, she, the woman wants to go inside the city to buy something. Yeah. She can go. She doesn't need a mahram. But outside the county, no. She has to have a mahram. You understand? I mean, the, the, the county can be connected to the whole city, though. Yeah, but, uh, but uh, it has to be 80 kilometers and up to be a traveler. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 80 kilometers and up. Okay. Yes. Why right. yeah. So, inshallah, we continue. Bidnillah ta'ala. The Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, Lesson 4, the things that break one's fast. The thing that breaks one fast are seven. First is marital relations. Marital relations. So when a fasting person had marital relations, while his fast, his fast becomes broken. His fast becomes broken. Furthermore, if this occurs during the day of Ramadan, not the night, the day of Ramadan, when fasting is obligatory, he is required to perform the mandatory atonement. Atonement means kafara, expiation. For the vileness of his act, because this act is very vile, which is freeing a slave. The first choice, freeing a slave. If he's not able to, then he must fast two consecutive months after Ramadan. If he cannot do this, he must free 60 needy people. Uh, He must feed. He must feed 60 needy people. However, if a person is not obligated to fast, such as a traveler, and he had relations with his wife while fasting, he must make up the missed day and doesn't have to perform this atonement because the traveler he has the concession to break his fast. So if he was traveling with his wife and they had relations, there is no problem, and all they have to do make up for that, make up for that day. The Sheikh he said 
Number two is when something was to come out. If someone was kissing his wife or hugging her or something like that, and and something came out. Number three, eating and drinking. This is when food or drink is transported into the interior of the body. Whether by way of the month, the mouth, or the nose, depending on what is being drunk or eaten. It is not permissible for a fasting person to inhale the smoke of incense, Bukhur, such that it will enter into his interior, since smoke is a substance. But as for smelling pleasant fragrance and perfume, then there is no harm and sin in this. Up to here, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all beneficial knowledge and righteous action. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.